it was more a case. I mean, I don't remember, if you remember back then, that, like the, the Fulham fans were all singing, like, we want our Fulham back, yeah. was, was the big song because it, it had gone. It, it wasn't there anymore. It wasn't the club. Like I say, you know, Henry Winter had said what a brilliant environment it was. And that, that had all gone. That had completely gone by the wayside. And it was a, not a nice place. Um, and so it was almost because of my history as a player and this and the other. And I, I, you know, I'm a bit of a soppy sod. I can't I'll throw myself into wherever, wherever I am and what I'm doing. So I, so I sort of love, genuinely love the club as a player. And then having come back and, and worked the 18s, like say the 21s. I had a, a genuine sort of love and feel for the for the, for the place and the, all the people there as well, and the players and, and the fans and everything. So, you know, my thing in my head, well, we want our Fulham back. Well, I've got a, and it was a difficult job to actually. I think it needed to be. I mean, you could have, you know, could have got in um, another good manager who would have would have certainly eventually done a good job. But I think. I do honestly believe that they at that that stage the club needed someone who actually understood the club a little bit to sort of get it back. And um, I know things didn't quite work out as I would have wanted in the end as as manager. You know the fans were then singing, "We've got our Fulham back." So I've gone from "We want it back" to "We've got it back." So that's that was in in effect. I think that's that was my big job to to get them to a place where they could actually have their club back. You know, and and like I say, because it was it was dark days and it was an absolute mess. No, absolutely. I mean, I think we always fought for many years. Like we had a manager in waiting with the success you have in the academy, and then obviously when the time comes, you don't get to really pick when that opportunity comes. But when it did come, it was it was almost an impossible task, wasn't it? Like I know you 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 got us sort of going again and got that Fulham back, that mentality back. But obviously, you know, if you'd if you'd if they brought somebody else in and then they'd laid some groundwork and then you came in after that, who knows what could have happened? That's what I always think about. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, like I say, I don't, you know, I'm not one one of those to have sort of uh, too many regrets and things like that. And I, you know, I, listen, I've been manager of Fulham, so I can, I can say that and, and very proudly so. And also, it was at probably the the darkest time yeah. um, for in I don't know in in. Well, going back certainly several years, I know, you know, the, obviously there were, there were tough times, not that long actually, before I signed for the club when, uh, you know, nearly went out of existence and things like that. So I'm not saying it was the worst time ever, but it was a, it was a very tough time. Um, and so I was able to, to do that. So I'm, I'm quite proud of the, the job I did. I think I slightly misread it um, in as much as having played, obviously, them years before, um, and and sort of had a, a good feeling with the, with the fans. I you know I thought that was like a Fulham way of playing a little bit as well. And I, so I, I had this. I'd like I say it was a mishmash of a squad. Really, um, it wasn't an assembled squad at all. Um, and I knew I had that for. I mean, I didn't make many signings. I mean, we brought in obviously TC came and uh, Tim Ream and a few others on sort of like free transfers or whatever. But we didn't. Couldn't make many signings at that time, um, or certainly when I was there. I was promised um, holding midfielder and a couple of centre backs, but uh, never never materialised. Um, big Kev McDonald actually was the one we were after, and then Sods Laurie ends up coming, didn't he? A couple of, a little while after I'd, I'd gone, but he would have been ideal for us. We were crying out for that holding midfield player. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, I, I've, got, I've got sort of no regrets about it, and um, things could have been different. As, but I, yeah, I, I did what I did, and I'm, I'm sort of very proud. I mean, I took over the, the club when they were rock bottom of the championship, and I sort of got sacked when we were like mid table, six points off playoffs, or whatever we were, five points off playoffs, and the leading scorers in the championship. So I went a little bit like so. I, I did go a little bit all out attack and thought it's not quite right, and we, we the balance wasn't there within the playing squad, but. Rather than maybe trying to shut up shop, and we probably would have got the same number of points, but would have been less attractive football. I thought it might buy me more time, give Fulham fans what they want. I mean, my last four games, we beat Reading 4 2, and then Bristol City 4 1. And then we lost to Burnley uh, away, midweek game at Turf Moor. It ended up, I think they won the league, Burnley, or certainly got promoted. And then it was, we got beat by Birmingham at home, which is the one that killed me with. Um, because they couldn't score a goal, but I mean, they scored five against us. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yeah, so we were scoring goals, I mean, and, and winning games by big margins, but then we could get get smacked as well, which I knew it wasn't right. The balance wasn't right. But I thought, 
if as long as things kept progressing um, and we kept improving and, and the league position, obviously, like I say, we were rock bottom when I took over. So um, we, we comfortably, in the end, stayed up that season. Um, in the end, although it wasn't pretty, um, then the following season, like I say, the balance wasn't right, but we were we were sort of a work in progress and we were scoring a load of goals, but yeah, defensively we weren't great and I knew the balance wasn't right, but uh, I maybe misread it a little bit. I should have been a little bit more maybe conservative with the approach, but sod it, we scored loads of goals and I had, we had a good time. So I, I, It was kind of my next question is there, there were some incredible highs, but so just it's incredible yeah, yeah. lows in there as well. Yeah. I remember like I looked back at the, the, the first full season where you were, I remember being away at Brighton when we won yeah. that game and Darren Bent um, yeah, exactly. made, yeah, yeah. made, made yeah. a fool of himself. And we, we won away at Leeds as well. And Roddy Yeager scored a goal, goal. Sandwiched in between that was a 5-0 loss to Watford, who were yeah. good that year and, won, yeah. and and got promoted. But was that just maybe, I thought, symptomatic of the players we had where you just had, in some areas of the squad, ridiculous Premier League quality, but then just a load of youngsters and quite random Foreigners that were that were brought in on freeze and super cheap transfers. Well, that's exactly it. It's, it was like I said, it was a mishmash of a squad. It's that's not an assembled squad, and there was all these, like I say, some good young kids, um, but who probably weren't ready. And then a couple of senior pros, but again, not many. And then a load of foreign foreign boys who who didn't know the league, and you know, some, I mean, some of them were decent, but a lot of them were cheap cheap buys, very cheap buys. Um, and not really appropriate for for what we needed at that time, you know. And it, so you know, it was it was you know it wasn't an easy an easy call at all. But I mean, that Watford game we talked about. I remember Betts got sent off um, very early on. Gabble crying. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, I knew Gabble well from I was at Palace with him, um, so I knew Gabble and his great tracksuit bottoms very well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he, he was in goal at Leeds when we beat Leeds that, that game you're on about as well, Gabor. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was like I say, it was it was crazy times, and it was very messy a lot of it. But then obviously over you know over time the, the squad was able to to be more assembled, if you like, and, and the club's gone on and done brilliantly, and I've been delighted to see it. I've got a few kind of individual player questions. And actually the first one is genuinely a kind of rags to riches story in terms of football. It's Dan Byrne. He was part of your side. And I think we all knew that Dan Byrne had some potential. He was a big centre back, great at heading it out. But, you know, released at Fulham by the season after after you left. And we know what he's gone on to do now. Was there any indication that this boy was the kind of Champions League level defender that he's, he's turned out to be? Because it's amazing, his rise. Maybe not Champions League, but I remember speaking to Dan not long after he'd, you know, I'd taken over as, as and I said, mate, you're, you are like a Fulham captain, 100%. You're like, you've got Fulham captain material. And if you keep your head down and stay, here, you, you know, you'd be captain of this club and, and you'd be very successful. So I knew he'd go on and, and become... Um, a good player, not necessarily Champions League and stuff like that. He's, he's done brilliant. I'm delighted for him because he he's one who deserves it and his, his attitude, his mentality um, was fantastic. What he probably needed at that time was was an experienced centre half to play. So although he's because he's such a big lump, like you know, six foot seven or whatever. Sometimes people, you know, they take size for for experience then or something. But but still, he's still a young player developing and, and very much learning the game. And he, he would have, I think, um, he would have done even better sooner at Fulham with, with a, a more established. I mean, him, I had him and, and Hutch, really, Sean Hutchinson, um, who again, both both sort of quite young boys, um, sort of both learning at that level as well. So they're both great lads, smashing lads, and both good players, but, but it wasn't probably the ideal pairing. It, probably for for both of them together. Like I say, if if Dan say had been alongside um, a more experienced, I mean Dan alongside an Aaron Hughes type thing would have you know you, you see that one working um, that type scenario. But I mean I was promised. I remember <laughs> I was promised Duncan, Duncan Tarkovsky, <laughs> and neither of them turned up. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the recruitment was a little bit was interesting at that time when I first came in as well. It's, it's certainly improved a lot more. Since what then. was that b- before the stat stuff really started taking off or was that at the time? To- no, it was at to- the time. Yeah. So it was, 
obviously Tony um, and his at the time friend um, who were doing all the stats and it was that was very difficult. Yeah. So uh, so did you have did you have any say? Um, not really. Uh, no, I mean like so obviously obviously Tom Kearney like so Mike Rigg was in at the time as well as um, yes. Chief Football Officer I think or was his title I can't remember what title they, they gave him. Um, so Riggy, I knew a little bit from from the Welsh FA. Um, so he's coming in, and and so Riggy spoke to me about Tom Kearney, and I was like, yeah, brilliant. He's, you know, he's, that's like a no brainer. He's he was doing great things at Blackburn um, in the division, so he knew he could play in the division, and was a very good player. So he was obviously a, a no brainer. So he ran in past me, Tim Ream as well. Um, Riggy was speaking speaking to me about, but then some. There were some some quite random ones who were coming from stats who uh yeah we so we did who um sort of came out of nowhere a little bit. 